Yeah, well, we have a um, privilege today uh, to baptize eight, and they're going to be baptized by, by different people. So who's first? Simon, uh, I was going to wait because it's so cold, huh? You're good, though. Well, this morning <laughs> we have the great privilege of witnessing the public testimony of several people uh, declaring their faith in, in Jesus Christ, and it's an outward symbol of an inward reality, and so baptism is a beautiful uh, visual demonstration of all that has happened in a believer's life. Uh, death to our old nature, a washing and cleansing away of our sin, and rising again to a new life of righteousness uh, in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit, and so that's what you're going to get a chance to witness today. So this morning... In particular, very special opportunity now for Simon Capco to share, to be baptized. And I know that he's had a chance to speak with his parents about your love for Jesus and with Louise Windsor as well. But we're going to invite you to do the same for just a few of your friends and family here this morning. Okay, Simon? Can you tell us a little bit about why you want to be baptized and your love for Jesus? The reason why I wanted to be baptized is because... Jesus has died on the cross. What he didn't have to. He could have stayed up in heaven. He didn't have to go down to earth. But he died for us anyways. Thank you, Simon. So like I mentioned to you earlier, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Do you uh, believe in your heart? that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for your sins and whom God the Father raised from the dead? Yes, I do believe. And do you confess with your mouth that you have invited him and received him into your life and that you are dedicating yourself here today to make him your Lord and Savior? Yes. All right, well, by the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I get to baptize you this morning. Congratulations, Good job. You can take that and head on. Thank you. You don't believe me, but I tell you, it's cold. <laughs> well, it's my great privilege to introduce uh, Lai Zhang to you. Some of you may know her. She's been a dedicated member of our church for a while, part of our Purpose Driven Life class and the Discover class and in Marion's class, and so we're just very excited to hear from you, Lai. Can you share with us about your love for Jesus? Thank you. Hello, my name is Lai Zhang, and I have been coming to Valley Church since 2022. Growing up, I had the habit of speaking silently my wishes to a divine power. At several critical stages of my life, my hopes and dreams came true, so I never doubted the existence of the divine power. One of the biggest challenges in my life occurred when my loveless marriage ended in divorce. I already had my daughter, so it was a very difficult time for me, but once again, I felt the presence of the divine power to encourage me to pursue something better, even if it means that what lies ahead could be hard and challenging. I moved to Irvine, Southern California, and there my parents brought me to church where I finally learned that the divine power that has accompanied me my whole life is the Lord God, and the salvation can be found only through his son, Jesus Christ. I finally understood and experienced the truth of John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Though my life has not been perfect, I am now more connected to God than I ever have been before. Miracles continue to happen in my life. He has provided for me my dream job at Apple as a data scientist. I experience the love of God daily. I pray to him when I brush my teeth, when I take a shower, and when I see the beautiful color of the sky in the early morning. My faith in God has strengthened since I moved to NorCal and joined the Valley Church. After joining the Women of the World small group, I truly feel connected to this church family. 
I'm especially grateful to Marion Noble. She's a role model of Jesus for me. I'm inspired by her story as a therapist and hope God will guide me in pursuing similar interests later in my career. I willingly surrender myself completely to God, whatever the plan he has for me lying ahead. I'm ready to find a romantic love again, but no longer anxious about the uncertainty because I know that God is always with me and loves me always. Thank you for sharing, Lai. I'm going to ask you the same questions. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for your sins and who has been raised from the dead? Yes. And do you confess now with your mouth that you have received him and that you have dedicated yourself to him as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Well, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I baptize you this morning. Congratulations. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Ah, it's pretty warm here. So I'm so glad to introduce you, uh, Brother Dan, to you. You know, he actually grew uh, at from Valley when he was a child. So he's wandering around when he's going to be baptized. Finally, God uh, might uh, remind his heart to make the decision. So, okay, Brother Dan, please give your testimony. Yeah, that's true, Pastor Frank. Um, uh, good morning, church family. I'm Dan Mott Smith. Uh, I grew up I kind of grew up in this church uh, part of the time as a young lad. Uh, my godmother, Barbara Helwig, I used to take me here and uh, when she went to choir practice, there used to be a choir balcony up there. She would sing. And um, during my teen years, I came here part of the time. It was one of the churches I went to. Came here man mainly just to visit my friends, uh, the Matsuis, uh, the Lees, and the Hours. Uh, but I did spend part of my time here. Um, I, um, I also went to PBC North and South and the Baptist Church, and I, I heard sermons from Andy Drake and Darren during that time. Um, I was given a godly example by my, uh, my grandmother, Joy, who raised me, and she taught me, she really instilled in me to stand upon the promises of God in, in Scripture, and, and I started doing that as a young man. Uh, as a teenager, I started, uh, I guess, testing God, but also standing on the promises, and out of that, I, I received many answers to prayer uh, uh, over a lifetime, and it, it, it's, uh, it's been a lifetime of answered prayer. Uh, God has been very good to me. I was in the military for many years, but uh, I can't, I've come back to Valley, um, and Pastor Frank of the past uh, few months has been kind enough to mentor me through the one-on-one -on -one, uh, discipleship program to deepen my faith and encourage one another. I just thank, uh, thank you all for being uh, just a welcoming, loving uh, church family. Um, as an adult, I, I want to be faithful to the Lord's commands, of which baptism is one. And so I'm happy to declare my faith as a Christian. By his stripes, we are healed. Okay, so Brian Dan, I want to ask you questions. First, do you believe Jesus Christ is a Son of God? and he died for your sin and raised up from the dead. Amen. <laughs> so, do you want to serve the Lord and serve his church in, for the rest of your life? Amen. Okay, based on your testimony and your confirmation, I would like to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations. Uh, 
Hello, everybody. Uh, I have the privilege of introducing you guys to a number of our high school students who have decided that they want to be baptized today. The first uh, is Jaden Stenford. Jaden, want to join me in the pool? Jaden, really quickly, can you tell the church why it is that you are here with me in this cold water today? <laughs> okay, I would like to start with a verse from John 10:27 through 29. It says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me for my father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the father's hand. So this verse sort of exemplifies a lot of things to me. It shows how God cares about us as individuals and that he, how he will always care and protect us. It shows he has a plan for us and how no one is more powerful than him so he can follow through with this. This verse is part of the reason it showed me sort of a little bit of God's character and how he cares for us. So that's a big part that led me to put my faith in Jesus and accept him as my savior. Consequently, because I've accepted him as my savior, I'm getting baptized as a public symbol of this. Thank you, Jaden. Jaden, I have three questions for you. Um, do you believe that you have fallen short of the glory of God, that you are a sinner deserving of God's just punishment, um, and that you can do nothing to earn God's favor on your own accord? Yes. Yes. Uh, the second question is, do you acknowledge that Jesus Christ is God's one and only solution to this problem of sin and the only way that you or me can be saved? Yes. Fantastic. Last question is, do you acknowledge that by your identification with Jesus through your faith in him, that you have already died to sin and that you are raised to the newness of life with Christ forever? Yes. Well, that is a powerful proclamation. And with that proclamation... We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The next student we will have down to the baptismal is Joel Wong. Uh, Joelle, can you tell the church really quickly why it is that you want to be baptized today? Well, um, <laughs> I, I don't have any extraordinary story or anything, but, but I love Jesus, and, <laughs> and I love to serve him, too. Um, I, I grew up in church, like probably a lot of you have, and obviously I knew all of the Sunday school answers and everything. Uh, you know, always remember, when in doubt, say either Jesus, God, or the Bible. Remember, it's, it's, what, it's, it's definitely one of those three. But um, yeah, during, during middle school, I learned that God really was my shepherd. And if I'd ever drift away from him, he would always use his staff and just reel me back in no matter what. And through that, I learned that God's will is the ultimate will, and it's the perfect will in the end. And I'm, I'm nothing compared to God, and nothing without God either. So I also grew up in Awana. And in Awana, who couldn't forget Sparky's key verse, John 3.16, right? We would say it like this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. But the, the truth is, Jesus really does save us all. You know, for God so loved the world, he sent his son to die for us. And each one of us has a choice whether we want to let him into our lives and let him be Lord of our lives or not. And so throughout these past couple of years, it's, it's been a blessing to see 
God working in my life and just seeing him show up in my life has been amazing. And I'm ready to tell everyone that I'm a believer and I want to tell others about Jesus so they may experience what seeing his magnificence and power is like. Thank you, Joel. That is a great proclamation of faith. That's powerful. Um, uh, yeah. And so just to further clarify, not that you didn't say everything, but uh, I just want to ask you three quick questions that you already know just to confirm what it is that you believe. Do you, Joel, believe that you are a sinner, um, that you are deserving of God's just punishment because of the things that we have done, uh, and that there's nothing that you can do to earn God's favor on your own accord? Jesus. I mean, yes. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> yes. Well, do you acknowledge that he, Jesus, is the Son of God and that he is the one and only remedy to this problem of sin that is so clearly in the world? Yes. Uh, and do you believe um, that by your identification with Jesus, through your faith in him, that you have died to sin and that you have been raised to eternal life with him on behalf of God. Yes. Awesome. Then based off of your proclamation of faith, Joel, I am very excited to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, coming down next into the tub, we have uh, Cindy Mack, who will be baptizing Brooke Berrios. Oh, it is cold. <laughs> oh. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I am so, so excited to be baptizing someone who's extremely special to me. I've been working as a leader in Brooke's life for so many years. I'm not going to cry. Um, and I'm so, so excited to be with her today to baptize her. Do you want to share a little bit? Hi, everyone. My name is Brooke, uh, and I'm a senior in high school. So I actually grew up in Valley Church, and so I've gotten to know God throughout my whole life. And for a while now, I've known that I had already dedicated my life to the Lord, but there had always been something that was holding me back from wanting to get baptized, and I think a lot of that was really just not really knowing what baptism was, which is why I want to thank Max for his baptism course, because even something as simple as that helped me feel a lot more informed about what baptism was, and so now I feel a lot more confident about my decision to get baptized. I have seen evidence of God's existence and presence all throughout my life, um, be it through convictions or desires to seek him and know him more, um, doing things that I know I don't have the strength or will to do myself, and also just simply how he brings me peace and calms my soul whenever I come to him. He has also blessed me with so many amazing people in my life that have drawn me closer to him, including Cindy, who stands next to me here, who has been so much more than a guide for me in my spiritual life. A verse that reminds me how much I need God is John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Of course, I know that my journey is not even close to being over, and I'm so excited to continue building my relationship with God for the rest of my eternal life, which is why I'm here, to de which is why I'm here today to publicly declare my devotion to the Lord. All right, Brooke, with that declaration of faith, I have three questions for you. You ready? Okay. Do you believe that you are a sinner, that you can do nothing of your own power to earn your salvation? Yes. And then do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he came to earth to die for you and is now your Savior? Yes. And then last question. With your identification through Christ, through your faith, um, where he died. Do you believe that you died to your sin and then are now going to be raised to life in him? Yes. All right. With your proclamation of faith, it's my honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Everybody's taking the microphone out of the stand. <clears throat> Good morning. It is my distinct pleasure to have Paul Belmars next to me. I've known Paul for probably about six years through middle school and high school. And it's one of my joys of working with youth as I have the opportunity to baptize them. So, Paul, uh, you have a little statement you want to read? Yeah. Hi, my name is Paul, and I've been in this church my entire life, but recently I've discovered my own faith. Through daily Bible reading, I am able to resist temptation. Also, my grandmother had strengthened my faith by teaching me the 23rd Psalm, as well as the Lord's Prayer. She also showed me how to have genuine faith as well as humility. A verse I'd like to share is Psalm 139.24. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Thank you. Paul, I have two questions for you. The first question is, do you believe that Jesus is the only begotten Son of our Lord and that he came to earth in human form and that he died on a cross for our sins but he rose again on the third day in newness of life. Do you believe that? Yes. And the second uh, question is, have you repented of your sin? And do you call on the same Jesus as your Savior and the Lord of your life, and you promise to live for him? Yes. With that, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Last one. Uh, everybody, welcome Sarah. Um, okay. I grew up in the church, but like many others, I didn't take my faith seriously because I didn't truly realize the weight of my sin or the weight of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. My freshman year was when I started to delve into my faith. My junior year, I started to severely struggle with anxiety and depression as I grew to hate my life and who I was. I questioned everything I thought I believed to be true, asking heavy questions that really only God had the answers to. But instead of asking God, I asked others within the church, avoiding God due to the shame I felt for sinning and just for who I was. As my trials went on, I began hating God and harboring anger towards him for not taking my pain away. If you asked me last year whether or not God's hand was in my life, I wouldn't have hesitated to say no. But today I can say with confidence that God was always there. There were so many nights filled with pain and suffering that left me hopeless. Every day kind of felt like waking up just to go back to sleep. But through all of that, I experienced so many moments of joy that are inexplicable without the Lord. It honestly astounds me that I have any joy and hope left for life, knowing how much pain and darkness has flooded my soul but I know without a doubt that my joy is a gift from the Lord. I've had so many leaders and friends that I know are blessings from the Lord who have stuck by me through everything, people who drop what they're doing just to answer a phone call or provide a shoulder to cry on. These people have no reason to help me, but chose to help me bear my burdens because of their love and trust in him. Camus and Clay is a song I've held on to through the difficult times in my life. Camus and Clay says, When I doubt it, Lord, remind me I'm wonderfully made. You're an artist and a potter, I'm the canvas and the clay. I know nothing has been wasted, no failure or mistake. This reminder was one of hope in many moments, but also a reminder I didn't want to carry in many moments. But I want to commit my life to the Lord to see how my pain is going to be used to glorify him. I know I can never earn what God has given me, but I want my love for the Lord to be used to help others like so many leaders and friends have done for me and pass that same love and care that I was shown to bring another broken heart to the Lord. A few questions. Do you acknowledge that you're a sinner deserving of eternal punishment, that you can't do anything to earn God's favor by your own efforts? Yes. Do you acknowledge that Jesus Christ is God's one and only remedy for your sin and the only provision for your salvation? Yes. And do you acknowledge that by your identification with him, by faith you've died to sin and you are raised to newness of life? Yeah. All right, well. And it's a joy to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
And uh, can we get one more applause for every person that's been baptized today? Oh, what a great day. Why don't you stand to your feet? And I'd just like to close this uh, time in uh, talking to our Father and asking him to uh, encourage not all of us, but all of these that have just made a proclamation in front of all of us. Father, uh, we come to you in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus. Uh, we come because you've come to us. Uh, you took on human skin and moved into our neighborhood so that we would know what, what you're like. And uh, you died for us according to the scriptures. You were buried according to the scriptures. You were raised to walk, uh, raised from the dead to walk in newness of life. And that's how we want to walk. We thank you for these eight today that have made a public proclamation before all of us that are here, before you, before the angels, before <clears throat> everyone in heaven and earth. And we just want to ask that you would keep them uh, in your loving care and, and uh, that you would continue to reveal yourself in deeper ways. So thanks for our time together today. Dismiss us now with only the joy that you can give. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Have a great Sunday, rest of it, and we'll see you next week.